Yep. Members, the Housing Committee on the Countering Terrorism Fighters Legislation Bill, in accordance with a determination of the Bus Business Committee, the provisions of this bill will be debated as one question, with the questions put separately at the conclusion of the debate. So the question is that parts one and two, the schedule and clauses one and two, stand part. Uh, the Honourable Christopher Finlinson. It may be helpful if I just make some preliminary comments on a, a couple of key aspects of the bill. Because what the bill does is make targeted amendments to enhance powers to monitor and investigate and to restrict and disrupt the travel for foreign terrorist fighters and other violent extremists. So the first set of amendments uh, deals with amendments to the Passports Act. The amendments uh, are subject to a sunset clause, uh, so that clause expires on 1 April 2017, and that was amended by the committee from 1 April 2018. The, the purposes of the changes to the Passports Act are to improve its operation and take into account the Security Council Resolution 2178, which asked states to restrict the movements of foreign terrorist fighters including their onward travel if outside their home country. So let's take a look uh, at what is proposed. First one goes under the current Act to Section 8A. Travel documents can be cancelled if a person is a danger to the security of this country because they intend to engage in or facilitate a terrorist act. And at the same time, when one is looking at that, one needs to bear in mind Section 5, of the Terrorism Suppression Act 2002, which defines what a terrorist act is. So it allows the cancellation of a passport of a suspected foreign terrorist fighter, uh, and uh, as I say, Section 5 of the Terrorism Suppression Act sets out what a terrorist act is. What under the amended uh, uh, proposal we seek to achieve uh, is to clarify and make it explicit that a passport or travel document can be cancelled on the grounds that a person is a danger to a country other than New Zealand because they intend to engage in or facilitate a terrorist act. And I say this immediately. I thought I'd said it in my second reading speech, but I emphasised to Mr Goff, who asked some questions uh, of me, that uh, those of his uh, constituents who want, and, uh, want to go and to uh, defend their families or provide help to their families in the circumstances he outlined, would not uh, engage the, uh, the, uh, the cancellation proposals here, uh, provided, of course, uh, they're not engaging in terrorist acts. And from the way he described it, they certainly would not uh, come into that category. What we're not seeking to do is what the Australian legislation does, uh, and that is uh, declare an entire region of the earth uh, off limits to our citizens, but it comes back and comes back time and time again uh, to that definition of terrorist act. So I hope that clarifies it for the honourable member. The second thing relates to duration of cancellation or refusal to issue. Under the current legislation, I refer to section 8A2, uh, passports can be cancelled or refused for a period of 12 months. We, we, in the bill, uh, there is the default cancellation or refusal period of 12 months, but it authorises the Minister of Internal Affairs to specify a period up to 36 months if the Minister is satisfied that the person would continue to pose a danger to New Zealand or any other country. And uh, I won't go through the safeguards um, on the exercise of this power, including rights of appeal to the High Court Judicial Review and so on. The second, I, I don't intend, unless honourable members have questions for me, to <coughs> go through the particular changes uh, to the Customs and Excise Act and the Immigration Act. What I do want to do is say something about the proposed amendments to the Security uh, Intelligence Service Act 1969, and thus set out in part, subpart uh, two of part two. The first deals with visual surveillance. Under the 1969 legislation, the SIS cannot obtain a warrant to, conclude, to conduct visual surveillance. 
Uh, the police have this power, and that was provided in the Search and Surveillance Act 2012. The proposals uh, will mean that the SIS will be able to obtain a warrant to conduct visual surveillance subject to the same conditions and safeguards as intelligence warrants. Uh, the warrants will only be available for the detection, investigation or prevention of any actual, potential or suspected terrorist act or facilitation of a terrorist act, and I emphasise those uh, phrases, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, because the limitation was inserted by the Select Committee, and frankly, I think it's a very good limitation. Uh, the strengthened office of the Inspector General will provide external oversight of the warrants, and the bill requires the Director to provide a copy of the warrant to the Inspector General as soon as practicable after it's issued. And then the second uh, set of um, amendments deals with surveillance and situations of emergency under the current legislation. The SIS cannot without, uh, act without a warrant in situations of emergency or urgency, though the police have uh, the power to conduct surveillance for up to 48 hours without a warrant in, in uh, such cases. Under these proposals, the director will be able to authorise surveillance activities to be undertaken in situations of emergency for a period of up to 24 hours, and as is clear, that was reduced from 48 uh, by the committee, and we're, we're perfectly happy with that. After that, a warrant must be obtained to continue surveillance, and I thought the <coughs> committee inserted a number of uh, very sensible uh, safeguards. Uh, including the director must be satisfied that the threshold for issuing a warrant is met. Authorisations can only be granted for specific purposes. Um, SOP 39 makes it clear that only the director can issue the authorisation. The director must notify the minister, the inspector general and the commissioner of security warrants immediately. Uh, and the Minister and Commissioner can order the NZSIS to discontinue any activity under the authorisation. Importantly, no further application may be made uh, for an authorisation in respect of the same subject matter. And if no warrant application is made to the Director, then the, uh, then the Director must provide a report to the Minister and the Commissioner setting out reasons why it wasn't done. So, Mr Chair, these, I think, are very sensible constraints that have been added uh, by the uh, committee, and the government, as is very clear, was very happy to uh, support them. And uh, so, too, uh, when the general review of the legislation is conducted next year, uh, there's going to be a, um, ample time to take a good look at them, see if they're working or whether further amendments are required. So they're the only points I wanted to raise uh, with the committee at this stage. I, I have jumped over the customs and excise and immigration, uh, but I thought they were the clauses that warranted detailed consideration. Yeah.